Hi there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey, and thanks so much for coming back this month to see another vidcast. I'm here with Susan Brubaker Knapp and Janet Lasher, who are two wonderful artists from the North Carolina, Charlotte area. And wow, you've got some really great work. Let me take a look at your portfolio here. I love this it. is a gorgeous piece. Now tell Thank me about you. this piece. This is, what's the name of this? Lepidoptera is the order of insects in, that includes moths and butterflies. Oh and so I took gosh. a butterfly photo that I had shot yeah. and totally abstracted it and did it in psychedelic colors and, Just. and did a lot of thread work on it. But it's the first time I've done a whole cloth painted piece. This is a Tyvek piece I did and I teach on joggles.com. Tyvek. Right, and this is a piece of painted Tyvek uh, the leaf is painted Tyvek and then it's stitched down. You cut it out first? You cut it out, stitch it down. I stitched all the veins. Yeah. And then I heated it. So it just, oh. it pulls away, it pulls away, but it holds down where you've stitched it. Right. So these are like holes that are in the Tyvek because of the heat. Right. Do you I use wanted a heat it, gun? Is that? Um, I used an iron for this an with iron. a piece of parchment huh. on top. And it, it melts a little bit and it creates this look of leaves in November that have started to wow. decay. And, yeah. That's yeah. really it's neat. It's a very fun technique. And you do have some purses I see here. Right, these were in the last issue of Quilting Arts Gifts. Cool. And they're now available, I think, as a free ebook from them. Ah, they, so you might want to go to Quilting Arts to, to get the, an ebook right. on doing these purses. Right. Really cool. Thank you. This one is oh, the in. Um, it's in the journal Quilt Project. Yeah. that's touring right now. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. How'd you get this um, metallic look on the fish? The fish are actually started out as a piece of white fabric, mm -hmm. and I painted the details with Lumiere, which is a metallic fabric paint that's right. widely available. And I cut them out and actually needle turned to applique them down. Yeah. Oh, they're just. Oh, this is such a beautiful piece, and I love that it's not necessarily squared off. Right. And what I was going for here was different perspectives on a tree. So looking up into the branches, the bare branches, looking straight down into the bird's nest, Aww. and then the bird on the branch, um, yeah. included feathers and those kinds of things. Oh, this is gorgeous. Thank what a you. world view. This is a piece I did and entered into the Quilting Arts Calendar Competition, and it got in. And they're running, it's, <laughs> so it's cool. this year, it was April, uh, for Earth Day, of course. Uh -huh. And this piece includes uh, Tyvek uh -huh. that was uh, melted and then stitched down as well as Angelino for the, all the swirls of the clouds. Right. But you have some other pieces in, in next year's calendar, which I was do. really cool. And I just found out. I just found oh. out a couple of days ago. And um, I have a piece that's going to go on the cover. <gasps> and I, you got yeah. a your cover, girl. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. so cool. And I got a piece in for October because I did pumpkins, so they put me in October. Wow. So I'm thrilled because I got two pieces in, which is that I, is so it's never happened before. Yeah. So that's really neat. Uh, what is this about? House rules. House rules is um, this list of rules that I made up when my children were re really young to tell them what they were supposed to be doing, and me too, because everybody needs these. And they include things as broad as the golden rule, which I have around the sun. Treat, treat others the way you want to be, be treated. treated, yeah. And as well as my favorite, you make the mess, you clean up the mess. And I have that next to the dog who does not clean up her own messes. <laughs> right. Absolutely wonderful. And then thread painted. This is a beautiful piece. You have captured a moment here. Thank you. I loved nursing my children. This was part of a group project. I belong to a small group in Mooresville, which is the town I live in that's near Charlotte. And it's a group of four artists, and we each picked something about motherhood that was really important to us. And the group piece is, is really strong. It has a strong emotional feel to it. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a child nursing. And I wanted to kind of go for some a little bit graphic, not totally realistic but it has the word communion stitched into it because that's really what I felt nursing my children was, was an yeah. act of communion. Yeah. yeah. Now this happens to be one of my <laughs> personal <laughs> favorites. I wonder why. Uh, because it has my daughter in it. <laughs> Tell me about this peach. Well, I took your class in, I think the fall of 2005, and I, I didn't really want to paint on fabric, I have to admit, but when you have a really great teacher coming to your town, you need to go. Thank you. So I signed up to take the class, and it was funny because everyone who came into your class, there were people like beforehand, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this. And every single person who took that class came out with a beautiful, beautiful face, yeah. which is a testament to your teaching, Thank you. really. But what happened to this face afterwards? I went home, and I was like, well, what the heck am I going to do with this? And um, my daughter has always loved mermaids and tr really thinks she is a mermaid. And so I d decided to build this. To, to be a mermaid. And yeah. I started with the central panel, mm -hmm. and um, then I found out that Husqvarna Viking was sponsoring a competition called Imagine That. And it was a, a 
exhibition that was juried and it ended up getting into the competition. So I built it, I ended up creating other panels and building this to the exact size and specifications oh, wow. that I would need to enter that competition. This was tr really the first art quilt that I ever did. Wow. And before this, I did not think of myself as an artist because I do traditional quilt patterns. And Good it, for you. it truly was an epiphany for me because I realized that I had something else in me that I had not been using. Yeah. And I barely slept for three weeks. Oh, you were possessed by the piece. I was. That's a good thing. I was. It was, it was an amazing experience. And this, you know, this eye looks right at you. It is amazing how you've captured it. It does, and so many people comment about this, and I just think it's because it's looking at you. You have to look back at it. Right. And I used my daughter's eyes and one of her classmates' eye, took a close-up photo of them, oh my and worked gosh. from that. That is so neat. Oh my gosh, these are, your <laughs> work you. is just gorgeous. Thank now, Janet, let me see your portfolio. Great. Now, you are quite an artist as far as creating fabrics. Yes. I do a lot of surface design work. I design my own images, uh, cut paper, stencils, uh, oh. screen printing, and I do a lot of dye work. And what I think is really fascinating with your work is there's so many different layers. I yes. mean, you look deep. When you look at it initially, you'll see the things that are on the surface, but as you take time to right. look at it more, right. there's so much depth to them. Right. Absolutely And wonderful. I build that up with, with layers of dye, but also with, with scale and repetition. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Do you teach at all? I teach quite a bit, actually. Yeah. I teach a lot of screen printing, um, a lot of dye work, and I also teach um, on... I teach beading, and I'm going to start teaching a beading class this summer on joggles. Well, that That's is great. so yeah. cool. Yeah. And I know that we're going to get to those beading okay. pieces because those were just fascinating. Sure. I'm very interested in um, both ethnic patterns and also uh, things that are reminiscent of calligraphy. And so I'm playing with those things. I see that mm -hmm. because this looks like oriental writing. Right. And I it's, did that myself. So it's not real letters, but it has the illusion. Right. The big image is a real letter, and that's the Chinese character for total, as in uh, the sum. And then the images in the background are um, kind of like Chinese writing that I did myself. So I was just, I've watched people do Chinese writing, like in restaurants, and I just sort of make those forms. So they don't oh really say gosh. anything. But oh, they well, look hopefully like they don't really say right. anything. Hopefully <laughs> they don't say anything. Uh -oh. But they look like characters. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. So what do you do with your pieces once you make them into fabric? Well, I've done quite a lot of things. I obviously provide a lot of fabric for my friends who are quilting artists. Do you have some of her fabric? I do. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, love, I love her fabric. And I also um, I make pillows and wall hangings. Wow, this is a colorful piece. Yeah, this is a process that is a semi-permeable stencil. It's a wonderful, fun process. And the great thing about this process is that you learn a lot about the color wheel because you need to follow the color wheel around or you start to get mud. But if you follow the color wheel around in order, you get very clear colors. Wow. And it's a beautiful learning experience about how colors work together. And this is a class, I hope? Of course. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at these fish. Now, I see these fish and they are just swimming in the water. I'm, the fabric is saying water to me and the fish are saying fish. And Yes, thank you. Um, this was a failure piece of mine. Right. <laughs> yeah. It started out as a failure, and I looked at it and I said, you know, it looks like a river with rain in it, and it really needs to have fish in it. So I drew a couple of carp, put them on some photo emulsion screens, and then overprinted them with dye on top of the rayon, and it really made the piece sing. I was really surprised. So what that taught me was that failures might be because you're a little bit too close to it or your expectation of what it was going to be like right. didn't come to fruition, it doesn't mean that it's a failure in the end. You just have to Isn't think of it with a new voice. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, let's get to some of the beading things, I hope. Are these art pieces in themselves that they be mounted on a wall? Yes, they could be. I actually like to hold them in my hand because, oh. and, I, and every time I bring them to show, people like to pet them. Mm -hmm. So they could actually be sitting on a, a coffee table. Yes. Yes. Fascinating. Yes. Oh my In addition, goodness. they could be made into pins. Right. Or mounted on a hat, for example. Right. Or on a large coat or a big sweater. Wow. These are just stunning. 
I want to thank both of you for sharing your work. Well, thank, thank you, you so thank you. much. This was thank you very, it's very wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, it's been great. It has. It's been great to see your work and hear about the work. It was great visiting with you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And thank you all for coming. I hope you'll come back next month and see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.